Gosh, we've been calling it the baby Land Cruiser, the mini Land Cruiser, the compact cruiser, the light cruiser. And uh, it's not even out yet, and it hasn't been revealed from Toyota. We should be getting that information probably around the Japan Mobility Show. I'll be heading to Japan in just a couple of weeks with David Chow, and hopefully they reveal that compact cruiser. Meanwhile, overseas here in the United States, we have a new compact baby lunar cruiser concept. Let's get into it. <laughs> I hope you guys have your snacks and drinks because not only are we going to talk about the baby lunar cruiser today and how outrageous it is, the LFA has been re-trademarked. Um, I wanted to talk about the new Subaru WRX TR. It's kind of like a, a STI light. Um, and then we're also going to talk about Mazda and Nissan. There's just a lot of stuff I need to get to today. And the reason why I'm kind of packing it all into this video, I am drowning in news. There's so much news. I got car reviews. I got to finish my Volvo V60 Polestar review, which is going to be insane. I also have the um, Nissan Z Nismo in my driveway that I've just driven around the block a few times. So I need to start driving that car and give you guys my thoughts on that as well. But let's get right right into the baby lunar cruiser from Toyota. Now, this is a celebratory design because uh, the Calti design team for Toyota, which is like the North American California-based design crew uh, for Toyota, they're celebrating 50 years of design, which is pretty cool. But, you know, I don't want to get too much into the history. Yes, they had some Celica designs back in the 70s, some Land Cruiser-like designs. Um, the MX-1 and MX-2 mid-engine supercars. This was their petition for the A80 Supra. Uh, so the Mark IV that, you know, obviously uh, Toyota didn't go with this design, but I'm getting Eclipse vibes from the rear portion. Um, I'm getting also Mazda vibes from that era as well. I think it looks really, really cool, but obviously we know history went a different way. Um, and let's get right into the Lunar Cruiser, guys, because that's what you came here for. So, of course, it's built to drive on the moon, but it can be also used here on Earth as well. And this is kind of stemming from JAXA, which is a Japanese aerospace exploration agency. They're teamed up with Toyota to create an actual Lunar Cruiser, a full-size Lunar Cruiser. Uh, and this is just kind of the mini one, the baby one that could also be seen here on planet Earth. And they're saying they're taking design cues from the original FJ40, and it has in-wheel electric motors controlled by dual joysticks. The baby Land Cruiser's compact footprint and airless tires give it unparalleled maneuverability. I want to talk about the images real quick. I mean, this thing is adorable. It's a bit weird looking. I like it from the rear more so than the front. Um, maybe that's what he... <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. It's early on a Saturday, uh, Saturday. Anyways, I like the big rack on top that takes up the entire roof, the amazing amount of glass here, um, and the rounded back that reminds us a lot of the FJ40. Airless tires, of course. Let's keep moving. Now, this holographic front end with the Toyota Heritage font reminds me a lot of what Nissan is up to lately with their concepts. Let me pull this up for you guys. Check that out. If this doesn't, ha I mean, this is like just one, a, a hologram on wheels with those repeating Tron grid like pattern um, with, you know, the Nissan design. So, max out concept from Nissan. Check that out. I'm seeing some similarities here, if you know what I mean. All right. Um, you know, I wish we had some circular headlights here to be more of an homage to that original Land Cruiser. We also have what looks to be some cameras up top because this doesn't have side mirrors. So you're going to have digital side mirrors as well. Looking pretty good climbing through the, the brush there. What do you guys think? Would you be interested? If Toyota came out with something this ridiculous, the here and the now, would you buy it? Um, I would want them to change the front end just a little bit, but I, of course, would be interested. Uh, the interior is out of this world, no pun intended. We have the dual joysticks, baby lunar cruiser in the little strip on the door. Look at the visibility here. And you select reverse, neutral, and drive. But here's the thing with dual joysticks, I feel like it's going to be, I don't know, I think of a tank. I don't know. I've never driven a tank and I don't know how to 
drive a tank at all, but I would assume like you have a joystick for each track on the side of the vehicle. So you would think the left side would be the left two left wheels because we have independent motors here per wheel. You would think that, you know, you would have some sort of reverse capabilities just by pulling back on those. But what do I know? It's just a concept. Oh, and, and your park buttons over here. We have, okay, so here's your side mirrors that can see what's going on with the front tires, it looks like, or maybe that's the rear tires. It's really hard to tell. This holographic display that kind of overlays on the glass. It's very interesting. Um, and we have some window controls here. What do we have? Uh, just lock, unlock, and then some window up and down stuff. Um, oh, and then I've been showing you guys the video. So baby land cruiser. I know I almost feel like this is coming in at a time that is saying, you know, we, we know that this thing would be popular, but this is a future concept. What is Toyota working on behind the scenes with that compact cruiser that has been teased since 2021 gets my hopes up, gets me really excited. I'll see you guys down below on that. We're going to keep moving. Over at Car Throttle, Lexus is a tra has trademarked LFA again. Um, and it's not just in the United States. It's been in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Israel. Uh, so what's going on here? Well, manufacturers like to protect their storied nameplates, even if they never use the name again. It is more than likely this car, if they ever call something an LFA again, it'll be this solid state battery next gen sports bev so call it the lfa or the lfb or whatever you want to call it but this is the only vehicle that lexus has shown to be a true successor of the lfa and there's no such thing as a true successor of the lfa because it doesn't have a screaming yamaha tuned v10 um, but solid state batteries is pretty futuristic you'll have uh, well over a thousand horsepower would be my guess and zero to 60 around two seconds. So this thing will be insane, but we're probably, it probably won't come out till 2030 would be my guess. So yeah, don't get your hopes up for a new LFA, at least not in the shape or form that we used to know it. All right. Uh, I want to move on to this guy. We have one image of this Subaru WRX TR. So not a lot to show there. I guess I'll leave it on the screen while I just read through some of the information about it. So we have high performance Brembo braking and it's six piston calipers in the front. And uh, I think it's two piston calipers. Yeah. Red two piston calipers in the rear. You have larger pads and rotors, larger brake master cylinder. All right. You also have stiffer springs and revised damping rates for better body control and better steering response. You have all new 19 inch wheels paired with Bridgestone Potenza S007 tires, retuned steering feel. Um, you also have standard Recaro black and gray ultra suede front seats, moonroof delete for better weight distribution. Um, you also have first ever eyesight on WRX models with manual transmission, and this will be arriving in Subaru retailers or dealerships first quarter of 2024. So we're not that far away. Um, and well, more information on this Bridgestone Potenza is 245 by 35. So pretty fat tires there. I don't see any difference here with the powertrain though. So 2.4 liter turbo, 271 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. We will get some more information at Subi Fest in Daytona, um, which should be happening soon. I'm not going to it. Daytona is a long ways from me, even though I live in Florida. Well, it is on October 7th, which is the day I am recording this. But no, I won't be going. I saw a really nice uh, WRX. With, you could hear the whistle and the blow-off valve going uh, on my way to drop the kids off to school this week. So I really appreciated that, getting a little tuner action in my life. I see Ferraris more often than I do uh, Subaru WRX is where I live. Um, so yeah, we don't have pricing. So stay tuned for that if I feel like updating you guys on it. Um, Nissan, we're going to pivot to Nissan. I've been making, wanting to make a video on them to see how they're doing uh, with the sales so far this year. Kicks is up 93%. And then what's happened in the Kicks is that they're supposed to have a, a new redesign, but it got pushed back because one of their molds got stolen down in Mexico for body work, I believe. So that's a bit of a messy situation. Nissan Versa's up 84%. Sentra's up 70%. Um, the, the talks are also that the Versa and the Altima are going to get killed off, um, which 
doesn't really surprise me, but we're going to have electric models replacing them. And then the Sentra is a huge volume seller for them. So the Sentra is selling uh, 89,000 units so far this year, which is up 41%. Ultima is down 13%, which is also a huge volume seller for them. Um, but you know, maybe if they cancel it, they plan on having a really affordable electric sedan that comes in 2025. I just don't see that being affordable for them. And it, yeah, big ultimate energy can never die. So I don't see them killing it off. Versa, absolutely, because all the other small manufacturers, or small car manufacturers have been killing off their entry-level models. Rio, Mirage are the latest casualties. All right, uh, Maxima. Well, they're still selling Maximas and they're up on the year. Um, the Maxima has been discontinued. So yeah, it's up 72% on the year, which is crazy. Leaf, I saw uh, one of the newer Leafs because I, the only way for me to tell is with the newer wheel designs. It's down 35% on the year when people want more affordable electric cars. And I think the Leaf could still provide that, but they're not producing them at volume. Nissan Z's only sold 1,300 units while I have the Nismo waiting for me. It's just begging for me to drive. I'm going to do a night review on it like I did on the Integra Type S because I don't think anyone's done one on the new Nismo. They've done a lot of daytime reviews, a lot of track reviews. And for me, when I'm in a car that's that performance minded, it's better for me to drive in the wee hours in the morning, 4 a.m. because no one's on the road. I can be a little bit more generous with the the performance of the car. Uh, GTR is up 457%. So the cars are up 12%. Um, the kicks we mentioned is up 90% on the quarter, but only up 11% on the year. Frontier is down really big this year. Don't know, maybe some supply issues going on. Um, I really like the Frontier. Love the big V6 in it. Like the nine-speed auto. It's a really good truck. Looks awesome as well. So yeah, I don't know why it's down so much. Titan. I just got an ad this morning that the Titan 60 months financing 0% financing rate. So they're trying to get rid of these Titans as it is canceled. It will be stop production mid next year. Um, Pathfinder up 50%. This thing is selling really well for them. Um, you can get a lot of good deals on the Pathfinder again with a nice three and a half liter V6. They ditched the CVT on the newest generation. Armada is up 105%. Maybe people want to get that beautiful VA before it's replaced by the large twin turbo V6. Rogue up 62%. They've cracked 211,000 units so far. That's uh, CRV territory in terms of volume. Nissan Aria sold about 9,000 units and the Aria is actually getting some crazy uh, lease deals for Nissan employees. These vehicles in, in some parts of the country are just rotting on lots. So Nissan has a special employee only lease where it's like two to $300 a month, like no money down. Um, and it's a one year lease. So that is pretty crazy. If you work for Nissan, I would be snapping that up. That lease deals way too good. Um, Nissan Murano, I can't believe it's still around and they are going to have a next generation of it. So riddle me that. Um, yeah. All right. Keep moving. If we look at the total for Nissan up 38% for their trucks up 28% as a total, uh, for the year. And it's even accelerating here quarterly. Well, that's daily selling rate. If we look at just volume, it's up 40% for the quarter. So very impressive. Um, Nissan, they're up about 40% on the quarter and about 30% on the year. Let's get into Infinity. How are they rebounding? Well, uh, they're doing really, really well. Total is up 48% riding on the coattails. Not necessarily the Q50 that I just reviewed. I just reviewed the Q50 Red Sport and really, really liked it. Uh, it's just really expensive. But the Q60 is one foot in the grave, kind of like the Lexus I, uh, sorry, Lexus RC. Um, QX50, their volume seller traditionally, um, right underneath the volume of the QX60, it's down 16%, but the QX55, the cool coupe-like crossover is up 11% on the year uh, and 20% on the quarter. So uh, very, very impressed for the QX55, but not the QX50 for whatever reason. But the QX60, uh, their number one seller and their lineup all time is crushing it up 117% on the year. 
Uh, they've only sold 22,000 of these things. But uh, yeah, it's good to see this vehicle. I see them on the road. And the more I see them, I think I like the design more than the Acura MDX. It just looks so premium. The headlights, the grill, the, the body from the side, like that sloping roof line. It looks amazing, the QX60. And when we reviewed it, we loved it for a family. Uh, it's a little tight for our size of family, but it's awesome. Love the QX80 as well. That thing's built from granite. Long live the V8 thing is awesome. It's kicking butt this year as well. So good to see Infinity out of life support. They're, you know, they're doing some at-home recovery at this point. Um, and they will be showing Nissan, maybe not Infinity because they don't exist in Japan. But Nissan will be showing some new concepts um, at the Japan Mobility Show. I think at least three of them, if I remember right. Um, and here's kind of like their drape here, drapery of their concepts. We know of one concept coming, uh, this thing, which is absolutely hideous. This is maybe the worst concept I've seen in recent memory. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I might not even cover it. I might boycott this design when I'm at the Japan Mobility Show. If you guys want to see me cover it, let me know down below. But this thing is an abomination of a design. It looks like it's it's uh, AI generated with just a bunch of triangles and lines. It's terrible. Um, speaking of not terrible, Mazda is on a killing spree. They are crushing it 12th, so a full year of year over year monthly gains. And the CX90 is just doing amazing compared to the old CX9. It's uh, accelerating in popularity. Best ever September sales for the CX50 and best ever September for the CX30. Mazda 3's production is back up 36% on the month, up 16% on the year. Um, Miata, there's a lot out there in dealerships now during the pandemic. They were like vaporware. You couldn't find them anywhere. Now you can finally get them out there. It's up 65% on the year down 23% on the month. It's hard to say exactly why they're down on the month, but they are, even though they're crushing it on the year. CX-30 up 60, about 60% 60 on the year, up 40% on the month. CX-5 is about neutral on the year, but down on the month. Uh, CX-9, rest in peace. CX-50 up about 16 to 20% on the month up 130% on the year. It's the first full year of sales there. MX-30, rest in peace. That 100-mile electric car was dead on arrival. Um, CX-90 total. Okay, so this is a, a new thing. Before, they were breaking it out between hybrid and plug-in hybrid. I wish they would still do that. Um, the plug-in hybrid was about half of the total CX-90 sales in previous sales reports. But they've sold 17,000 so far this year. If we compare to the CX-9, um, it is 17,000 as well uh, when you look at the total of, uh, I guess, so far this year. If we look at the total so far of last year, it's 23,000. But the CX-90 has not been on, this, on sale for the full calendar year. It went on sale early 2020, maybe late spring. Uh, 2023 here. So yes, great to see the, the CX-90 kick and butt taking names. It's one of my favorite three-row crossovers uh, on the market. Uh, for cars, they're up 23% total and trucks 26% total and they're just continuing to do really well. Uh, you might be saying, Kirk, up 26% and that's true. If we look at the industry standard though, uh, the industry is only up 14.5% total. So Mazda doing well. Uh, Toyota and Lexus not doing that hot so far this year, but they're accelerating into their fourth quarter. Uh, I already covered them with own videos. I've already covered Honda and uh, Acura as well, which they're going to be right here. They're doing really, really well, up 33% on the year. Hyundai and Kia are crushing it as well. They're up 15%, but they had a strong last year, so they're still just improving on their, their uh, momentum. Um, Mazda, there you go, up 26% on the year. Nissan Infinity, huge comeback year uh, for them, up about 30%, and it's it's very good to see. Polestar, up 26% on the year. They have those refreshed models. Rivian, up 237%. They are still bleeding money out the wazoo. Nowhere close to profitability. They're losing like $20,000 per vehicle, which is just 
insane. But I'm not going to go over all the brands. I've covered most of them or at least the, the relevant ones uh, for my channel on previous videos. But I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. What do you think of the baby Lunar Cruiser? Is that a teaser for the baby Land Cruiser, the Land Cruiser Mini? I think so. I think they know consumers will like a compact, capable off-roader that is more affordable than a 4Runner, more affordable than the J250 Land Cruiser that we are, uh, will be getting very soon here. But I'm going to shut down. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.